No, this is not going to be some complicated math video because I really just do not speak maths, but I think a little backstory is in order. So, fans of this channel might know that a couple of weeks ago, I converted my bike to an e-bike, but they gave me the wrong battery. I ordered a 48 volt battery, and this is the battery I received. Now it's going to be a while until I can get the right voltage battery, so I thought today I would do a little experiment and just see how far down I can run this battery until the bike refuses to go anymore. Actually, it was kind of an unintentional experiment, but... So I was going along, and all of a sudden, it just decided, nope, that's it, not gonna go anymore, and I knew the battery was spent. Or at least what the circuitry in the bike thinks is a spent battery. So, pedaled the rest of the way home, and measured the voltage of the battery, and it was about 36.2 volts, which, according to this chart here, equivalates to about 52% charged. So what I want to do is, I want to make my own charge meter, so I've got some idea of how much useful charge there is in the battery. So the trouble with batteries is that as they drain, their unloaded voltage doesn't really go down that much. So I've got a 9 volt battery here, which is pretty much empty. And let's just measure the voltage at it. If I can get the thing on there. And as you can see, we've still got about 8.84 volts coming out of this battery. I know there's a big difference between this and uh, one of these, but I'm sure you get my point. So, I've been doing some thinking, and I've decided that... 42 volts is fully charged, and 37 volts is what I'm going to consider better get home pretty damn quick and charge the battery. Alright, so, got a very simple setup here. As you can see, I've got my faulty meter, and a swing level needle meter, and we're putting 9 volts into this circuit, well, according to the meter, 9.18, which is about the voltage that you'd get out of a fully charged 9 volt battery. And this is the circuit here, so we've got a positive and negative, and there's the meter, then we've got a 1k variable resistor, and that is connected to the meter. Now, I'm going to lower the voltage to about 4.5 volts, which is where you would think a half-charged 9-volt battery would be. I mean, it's logic, but of course, we all know that's not the case. So let's just lower that to... 4.5 volts, went a little bit too far there. Right? So you can see that this is now running about half, and this is running about half. However, if we take our depleted 9 volt battery, and plug this from the power supply, and connect that to the battery, you can see it's reading pretty much full. So, yeah. Measuring the entire voltage range from 0 to 9, or in this case, 0 to 42, yeah, that's just not going to tell you how much charge you've got in your battery. We only want to measure this range of voltages here. So if there was some way we could make 37 volts become 1 volt, 38, 38 volts become 2 volts, 39 volts become 3 volts, and so on, that would work. And we could dial in the sensitivity of the meter that we need. Well... The more eagle-eyed among you might have noticed that this is what I've come up with. So, got a xenodiode here, obviously reverse biased. So whatever voltage comes into this, that's going to drop that by about 36 volts. So it only measures the voltages from there to there. Question is, is this circuit going to work? I have absolutely no idea, so I'm going to build it up and try it. I cannot believe I've already recorded over 8 minutes of footage. Okay, so, got the breadboard out again. Now, ignore all this stuff here, that's nothing to do with it. All you need to pay attention to is this stuff down here. So, as I don't have a xenodiode of the voltage I need, I just, I just built up my own xenodiode, just putting several xenodiodes in series. So, four of these are... 7.5 volt zinners, and this one on the end is a 
two, I think, if I remember. And I've got my faulty meter to measure what's coming in and what's going out. I wish I had two meters to do this with, but, um, yeah. This is the only meter I've got that still works. So, we're measuring the voltage coming into the circuit. And this one kilo ohm resistor here is just being there as a load. So, at the moment, we're measuring the voltage coming in. I'm now going to switch this over to what's coming out. If I had two multimeters, this would be a lot easier, but at the moment, this is the only one I've got that still works. So, nothing's coming out, so I'm going to start turning the voltage up until we start seeing something on the meter, and then we'll measure what's coming in. Okay, it's starting to twitch. Let's see if we can get about one or two volts out of this. Okay, so that's about one volt. Let's see what's going in. I can get that on there. And I have effed up already because I've connected the meter to the wrong thing. Let's put that back on there. So about 1.2 volts. Let's see what voltage is going in. And we've gotten about 36 volts, so we're actually pretty close to where I need to be. Right, I'm now going to ramp the voltage up to 42 volts, which is going to represent a fully charged battery. Okay, it's a little... my power supply is a little bit twitchy because the controls are a bit scratchy. Right, so we've got about 41.5 volts going in, that's close enough. Let's see what voltage we have coming out. About 6.4 volts. So yeah, I think this is going to work. I've swapped the 6.2 volt zinner for a 6.8 volt zinner. The other four zinners are still 7.5 volts. Now, I'm putting 37 volts into the circuit, which is representing pretty much... You, need, you better get your ass home quickly, battery. So, I'm going to disconnect my meter from the input, and we'll see what's happening at the output. And we have about 1.6 volts. Alright. Now I'm going to connect the meter to the input again. And I'm going to crank the voltage up to 42 volts. That is if my power supply will be stable. Alright, so we're at 41.8. Um, Let's see what voltage we've got coming out. Yeah, it's about 6.16 volts. Um, that's pretty much in the ballpark of where I want it, so next thing to do is um, do the meter. Okay, so let's try this with a swing needle meter. So we now effectively have this circuit here that you saw earlier. Let's see if it works. Now I've got my power supply set to about 24 volts, so I'm just going to connect that up. Right, okay, that's given out about 22 volts. Now, I'm going to crank up the voltage to about 42 volts, which is going to represent a fully charged battery. So, 42 volts, right about there. That's close enough. Now I want to adjust the sensitivity of the meter, because I've got this potentiometer turned all the way down at the moment, so don't damage the meter. Let's see if we can get some deflection there. Okay, that is really sensitive. Okay, let's just put it there. So at 42 volts, the needle is pretty much almost right at the end there. Okay, I'm going to turn the voltage all the way back down to about 20 volts. Now I'm going to start ramping up the voltage until this meter starts to move. Just watching out for deflection. Ah, oh, there we go, starting to move. And we're at about 35 volts. Let's start going up even more. 
And yeah, I would say that's working pretty well. We're simply just measuring that short range of voltages. So, I think that is working pretty well. Next thing I want to do is put this onto a proper PCB, so I can mount this on my bike. Obviously, I'm going to make a much better scale for this meter, because right now that doesn't really mean anything. So, that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, so you have to excuse the mess. I haven't really had time to tidy up, but I spent the rest of yesterday evening soldering this up. And just like before, I've got this connected up to my power supply, so let's switch that on. I've also got the multimeter hooked up, and I have a fully charged battery. So, let's see if this works. Mm, yes, it does. We've got some meter deflection there, so that's good. I sound a bit weird because I've only just this moment woken up, so my voice is all at the moment. Let's see how far a fully charged battery will deflect the meter. And if I've got this all set up, it should be right at the edge. Let's make sure I don't short any wires out here. And okay, here we go. We have meters right there, and I'm going to make a little mark where that ends up. Right there. So that is where a fully charged battery will be. I've also been doing some thinking, and I decided that 42 volts is going to be 100% charge, 41 volts is going to be 80% charge, and so on, until we get to 37, which I'm going to consider as 0% or empty. Now I know that's not exactly right for a 36 volt lithium ion battery. 37 volts is about 60%, but as my bike is never going to use the entire capacity of the battery, I've decided to do it this way. So now, I've got this connected up to my power supply again, and I'm just going to mark all of these little voltages and their respective percentages that I've decided on. Okay, slight problem, I thought this pen was black and it was, um, it's purple. It looked black in this light, but I uh, don't really think that's going to matter. Okay, and that is done. I had a slight rethink about the scale. I decided that, um, 37 volts would be 10%, and 36 volts would be considered completely empty. So, I guess the next thing to do is put this on my bike and see if it works. Right, well, that's on the bike. I have to switch to my other crappy cam. You can see that's reading a full battery. Of course, I do expect that to go down just a little bit when the bike's in motion and then climb back up again. Let's just give that a little test. Yeah, it do. But I would say, all in all, it's a successful experiment. I mean, a successful, um, another successful procedure. Well, let's go, go put my camera back in the shed. Of course, there's always people there. Hmm. Brakes chattering a bit. Yeah. Okay, so I've made a much more nicer looking scale for the meter, and I'm going to admit that I effed up a little bit here. Because when I was measuring the full voltage of the battery, it was still connected to the charger, so it was higher than what it should be. So, let's just connect my meter to the battery. Hopefully without shorting anything out. Let's see if I can get my probes in there. Okay, will that stay in there? 
Okay, so you can see we've got 41 volts, but when I connect the charger, you can see the voltage goes up just a little bit. So that's what I was considering a full battery when, in reality, it should have been a couple of volts lower than that. And I was a bit perplexed, you know? Fully charged battery, it's only reading 80%, what's going on? I thought maybe I'd bumped the potentiometer and it had gotten out of calibration a little bit. But anyway, I've gone and made a new scale for the meter, recalibrated it. So, how I connect this meter to the battery is, because this and this are internally connected, I've got one of these barrel connectors and I can just stick that into the battery there and you can see we have a full battery according to this meter. And for those of you curious about the final circuit, well, here it is. Yep, not much has changed apart from the fact that I decided to go with five 7.5 volt xenodiodes in series. That seems to work a little better and I've calibrated the meter properly and uh, yeah. I've been out and tested that, and it seems to work pretty well. So, yep, I guess that's it for now, so until next time, goodbye.